Okay, so think about how traditionally guard is played. So the drums in front of me just speak part of My left foot, okay, or left leg, will be controlling the right side of Tyrone's body. Okay, so my left leg will be in charge of controlling this whole side of his body. My right leg will be controlling this side of his body. Okay, and that's, you know, no matter what guard you're playing, say I'm playing De La Hiva, it's all the same, you know, De La Hiva's in, this leg's controlling this side, this leg's controlling this side, even if Tyrone fall, drops to his knees, right, and I pull him into close guard, my left leg is controlling the right side of his body, and my right leg is controlling the left side of his body. Jump up again there, bro. But when we, when we go into scissor guard, which is a, the most important part of guard retention, or Donaher insists that this is the most important element. There's five important elements, but this is the one that's the most. The problem is, if Tyrone pushes my leg, and he chose to, and he's got past my legs, now my right leg is going to control the right side of his body, and my left leg is coming to here. The goal is, take it back a step, when I'm here and Tyrone is in my center line, um, my left leg will be controlling the right side of his body and my right leg will be controlling the right side of his arm, uh, the left side of his body, okay? He is between, technically he is between my legs. No matter what guard I'm playing, he's between my legs. The minute he cuts an angle, I've lost the center line. So now my right leg will control the right side of his body and now I switch over to scissor guard. Notice the way now my left leg is controlling the left side of his body. So it's the opposite way in which we play it, if that makes sense. Now from that position, the reason I've had to go into this is because I've lost my center line. Now from here, if Jerome tries to put weight and pressure onto me, technically he's still between my legs. Okay? But I don't have too much offense that I can do from here, and I don't really have my center line back. So all I'm gonna do is, obviously I can make grips extend, and now I'll be looking to bring my legs back. So getting my center line back, and once I get my center line back, my left leg is controlling the right side of his body, and my right leg the left side. He makes grips again, maybe he cuts an angle, oh, perfect, so now, my right will come in and my left comes to here. So I'll put them back between my legs, but my legs are crossed. And again, offensively, there's not too much I can do from here. But if you notice, I need to get my center line back. My center line's still facing this way. So now from that position, I can extend. The, the, the right leg that's controlling the right side of his body will make a hook and then I just come back inside. Now my center line back and we're back to traditionally how we play the guards. So, that's sort of it in a nutshell. There are different layers to it. So there's three different types of scissor guards depending on how close Tyrone is to me. So at the really furthest distance that he is away from me, if Tyrone doesn't even make grips, and I'm just gonna move it closer bro. So if he just cuts an angle this way, notice the way I can basically stay low with a scissor guard. My second foot comes in. And now I can use that to get him back. He moves this way. It's very simple for me to, um, with a low um, scissor guard below his knees, just from, because this is the furthest distance he has. So he's, he's, he's cut angle, but he hasn't really got close to me. So as he moves this way, my, I'm still putting him between my legs, but my scissor guard is quite low, it's below his knee leg. And now from there, I can just come back. Now if Tyrone cuts an angle this way, and now he starts to get a little bit closer to me, I've now started to come up to the waist. Obviously I'll have to free him because he's closer to me, we've covered all this before. And now my leg will be coming over the shoulder line. Again, technically he's still between my legs. Right side, my right leg's controlling the right side of his body, left the left side. As he tries to get close to me, I can be extending with my legs and using my frames. So now from there I can start to get my guard back again. So again, from this position, he makes his grips because he's close to me. So again, shin's coming in, left leg's coming over, notice how I'm in scissor guard, but I'm now sort of between his waist and shoulder line. 
So I'm slightly more higher up. And again, as he tries to put pressure on me, I can keep him away just with the extension of my legs. And now from there, I get inside control. And now he's between my legs again. And the last one, maybe he makes grips, he cuts the angle, but he moves into the north side. Now I'm saying I'm just gonna lay like this. Okay, as he moves into the north side, I'm bringing my knees towards my chest. Because what does he want as a guard passer? He wants the level change and get his chest on my chest. So if I tuck my knees towards my chest, that's not going to happen. So I brought my knees in. And now from here I can frame. I can throw my leg up. And if you've noticed, I'm in scissor guard again, but I'm above his shoulder then. Okay. And now from that position, I can turn to face him. And I just rotated 180 degrees. So again, one more time on that, just from there, bro. So he's made his grips, he's cut his angle, and I'm basically up. And now I can just turn. Face him, one more time on that. So he's made his grips, he's cut an angle, so I'm here, I'm staying tight, leg comes over, and then I just turn and turn to face him. We use this drill in the, um, as one of the solo drills from the supine position, this ability to um, turn. 180. Can't remember the name of it. So, um, your move, bro. So, um, that is the um, the first important um, concept from guard retention um, are scissor guard.